Welcome back to The Broken Meeple. This is the how to play video for Forbidden Desert. I've already got the review for this ready and rolling. I just wanted to get this uploaded first so you can have a general idea of what you have to do in the game, how the game plays for the first couple of turns, and if you go over a few of the rules that some people may have confusion with. Now for starters, Forbidden Desert is a cooperative game for two to five players where you have crashed in the middle of a desert and you have to find your ship, repair it, and then get off. Now, you can lose by one of three ways. One, you run out of water and die of thirst. Typical for a desert, really. The second, you could be buried under sand. Now, these represent the sand tiles here, and if this whole pile is depleted, i.e. scattered all over these tiles, then the whole party loses. The third way of dying is if the sandstorm gets too violent, that you end up losing through that way. The skull and crossbones on the top of the sandstorm track is how you tell whether it's got too violent or not. Now, first off, before you set up the game, you have to choose your roles. There are six roles to choose from. We have the two that I'm using for this example, water carrier and the archeologist but you can also use the explorer and the climber. I'll just move that peg out of the way there. But you also have the meteorologist and the navigator. Each one of them has a special ability, a certain quantity of water that they can carry with them, and other than that, that's essentially it. They all have specific roles that are all really useful to this game, and it's up to you to decide which ones you want to take. I have chosen to take these two. The archaeologist. He can't carry much water. As you can see, he can only carry three swigs. However, his special ability is that he can clear two sand from one tile per action. Now, normally you can only clear one, and this will make more sense when I get into the game. The water carrier, one of the most useful classes in this game, in my opinion, can carry five swigs of water, and his special action is that he can clear a well faster by taking two water for one action. Normally, I believe you can only do one water for an action. And he can also give water to players on adjacent tiles for free. Now, normally you have to be on the same tile for that to happen. The rest of the abilities on the characters I won't be going into for this video. You can read up on those either on the PDF rulebook or when you start playing. But these two are a good sort of starting set to get used to. Now, to set the game up, you have 24 sand tiles, i.e., no, sand tiles, sorry, location tiles. Now, you set them up in a grid of 5x5 five five with the middle space absent. This represents the eye of the storm. You also place sand tiles, which are these little sort of crisscrossy things, in such a way that they go from, in essentially a big rhombus, I suppose you could say, or a square. A sort of twisted square, however you want to describe it, but you set them up in such a way. You also take the sandstorm track, and depending on how many players you have, in this case two, and which difficulty rating you want to use, if this will focus in, I can show you to a better extent. Yeah, man, there we go. So you can take legendary, elite, standard, or novice. I recommend you start off on novice, and then maybe standard, but Elite and Legendary is only if you are a masochist. Seriously, this game will punish you severely if you try to underestimate it. You will also need the ship parts, which is this collection of tokens and models here. You will need to pile up the sand tiles ready for using, and you will need the sandstorm deck and the item deck shuffled and placed next to the board. Now, on a player's turn, they can take up to four actions. Anybody who's played Pandemic will recognize this as a very similar way of doing things. You can do several different types of actions during your turn, but you can only do up to four action points worth. So the available actions you have are move, pick up parts, clear sand, and excavate. Now to move, you simply take your pawn and move it to an adjacent tile. You cannot move diagonally unless an ability tells you otherwise. 
You can excavate a tile by going to one that does not have any of these sand tiles on it and flipping it over to represent what's underneath. Picking up a part requires you to find the part, which are all these nice little cool models that you get. Let's, for example, just say that there was a part there and your pawn was on it. You could spend an action to pick up the part, place it next to your roll card, and then it's yours to carry around. The fourth action you can do is clear sand. Now, to clear a sand from, again, an adjacent tile, you spend an action and remove the tile. Normally, you can only get rid of one at a time, but the archaeologist can get rid of two at a time, so already you can see what his role in this game is. But we are not going to do that just yet. The archaeologist will take the first turn. He has four action points to spend, so he's going to choose to clear one sand from that tile for the first action. Then he will choose to move to that tile for the second action. His third action will be to excavate and flip it over. And his fourth action will be to move to this tile. Now, when he flipped over this tile, you check to see its effect. If it has a cog symbol on the bottom corner, that means he's found an item card. Item cards are represented by the deck with the same symbol on them. We check it, and he's found a jetpack. Yeah, this is kind of a steampunk style universe, so yeah, it's kind of this technology. With this ability, he can, if the thing will move, there we go, move to any unblocked tile and can carry another pawn on his starting tile for the ride. Play at any time, doesn't count as an action. It's a good little card for moving around the board. He simply keeps that card in front of him and does nothing else. That's his four action points used up. Now he has to draw cards from the sandstorm deck depending on the level of the storm itself. The level is represented by the middle number in which the peg on the left, i.e. the track marker, is pointing at. It starts off on three, two of you are on novice, goes up to four, five, six, and then death. To be honest, if you're anywhere near six, you're probably gonna die anyway. It gets nasty at that point. So you start by drawing a card from the deck. Now ensuring that the compass is pointing north, i.e. this red part there, you check the symbol on it. This represents that the storm is moving two tiles to the right. Now when I say the storm is moving two tiles to the right, I mean that you have to physically take the tiles and move them into the eye of the storm, i.e. the spare space. So in this case, the card has told us that they move two to the right. Therefore, we take these two tiles and move them right in one big line. For every tile that moved in such a way, you have to place a sand tile on each one that moved. If there is none on there to begin with, it's flipped on the yellow side to represent it's just sand. However, if there's one there already, then you have to place it on its flipped side with the X on it to represent that the site is buried. If it is buried, you cannot move to, through, or off that square until you clear the sand. This is where the archeologist comes in again. That was just the first card though. We have to draw three. So the second card, again, line up the compass. This says that you have to move the storm up one space. So you take this tile, move it, and there you have one sand tile. The third card, storm picks up. Now when you get one of these cards, you have to move the sandstorm meter, you know, focus it, move the sandstorm meter up one tick mark. Once you've got this, you take your sandstorm marker and move the track one tick. You will carry on in this fashion going into the various levels of Sandstorm as the game goes on. Once you've done that, that is your turn over. We now come to the water carrier, the blue pawn. The blue pawn is deciding that he needs to find a water source quickly. A water source is dictated potentially by these tiles here with the water symbol on them. One of them is a mirage, two of them are real though, so it's up to the water carrier, or anybody really, to quickly find out where the actual wells are. So on his turn, he is going to go one, two, three, but then he cannot excavate that tile until he clears the sand off. So his fourth action, 
will be to remove the sand. He then has to again draw cards from the deck to represent the sandstorm. Starting with the first one, again, make sure that the red needle is pointing north. This sandstorm is moving one tile to the left, which means this tile is shifting. One sand tile is placed on top of it, and because there is already one there, you have to place it so that it is buried. We then have the second one. The storm now moves down one space. So this tile moves, and if it's already buried, then it just continues to be even more buried. You just keep putting sand tiles on and on until the deck runs out, effectively. The third card is Sun Beats Down. Now, this is a different card in the deck. Players each lose one water unless they are in a tunnel or under a solar shield. Solar shield is basically an item you can pick up in the game. And the tunnel is a particular tile where you can effectively take shelter and survive the sun. When a sun beats down, if you are not in a tunnel, you have to move your tick marker down one on your canteen to basically show that you have taken a swig of water. Now, each person carries a different amount of water. And if it will kindly focus on the card, there we go. If you run out of water, you die. Now, what you already gather from this game is that if one person dies, that's it. It's all or nothing. There is no leave that man behind so we can survive. If one person dies, that's it. You lose. So you can see how difficult this game can get. That was the free cards for the water carrier. And now we go back to the archaeologist. The archaeologist is on a tile that he can explore. So he's going to do so. First action point, flip the tile. Now he has found a potential clue. Now each of the pieces of the ship has two of these tiles, one of them pointing north and south and the other pointing east and west. You can tell which alignment they are because this will always be in the bottom right corner. Now, what happens at the moment is nothing. However, if he were to find the east and west clue tile for that particular part, you would then check where the two interlinked. So let's, for example, let's find the clue token for it. Here we go. It's this one here. Let's say that on a previous turn, he excavated that. You would then take the part, you would check where the column and the row intersect for the purposes of the clue. It says this column and this row. So it intersects on this tile here, and this is where you would place the part. Unfortunately though, he is yet to find that particular clue tile. So at the moment, we don't have any idea that it's there. I'm just showing you as an example. So that was his first action. The second action he's going to do is to start clearing sand. Now, he can't move onto this tile, so he's going to spend his second action point to remove two tiles from there. Now, remember, he can remove two tiles because his special ability as an archaeologist says he can. Here we go. Eventually, clear two sand from one tile per action. His third point is going to be to remove the final tile, and then his fourth is going to be to move onto that tile. He then draws cards from the Sandstorms deck again. Sun beats down. Again, they have to deduct one water from their canteen because of the sun beating down. As you can see, the archaeologist is getting dangerously close to dying of dehydration. Second card. Again, check the symbol. And there we have the storm is moving one tile to the left. So again, the eye of the storm is here. So this tile moves to the left and puts one sand tile on it. You then have the third card. Again, compass symbol there. The storm is moving two tiles south, which means one, two, one, two. And that's how the sandstorm effectively works. You will constantly keep flipping the cards, moving the sandstorm track up if the storm picks up, deducting water from your canteen if the sun beats down, and otherwise just shifting the eye of the storm all over the place and sticking sand tiles all over the place, burying the people. So we go back to the water carrier's turn. 
The water carrier hopes he has found a well. So the first thing he's going to do is excavate it. Success, he's found one. Now, as soon as you flip over a water tile, you instantly get two water back for being on it. It's a nice little bonus. So the water carrier gets two swigs of water instantly. Now, the water carrier's ability is that he can give water to players on adjacent tiles, and the archaeologist is in a situation where he doesn't have much water left. So the water carrier wants to get as close to his buddy as possible to give him some water. So his second action is going to be to move to this tile here. He still has two actions left. So for the time being, he's going to excavate this tile, and he's found a tunnel as well as granting him an item card, as per the first tile that was excavated, it also is a tunnel. Now, the idea with a tunnel is that there are two in this selection of locations here, and if you can find the second tunnel, you can travel from one to the other for one action point. It's a very useful way of getting around the board depending on where you find the tunnel. However, if you recall from the Sun Beats Down card, like so, it also stipulated that they lose one water unless they're in a tunnel or under a solar shield. So the tunnel acts as a way of surviving the sun beating down. And that's always a useful thing. You can use it as kind of a retreat point if things are getting bad. Now, that was his third action point to move there. So his fourth action point is going to be to move to here. Oh yes, we forgot to pick up his item card. Again, it's another jetpack. The fourth action will be to move to his location. And because the water carrier's special ability is that he can give water to players on adjacent tiles for free at any time, he is going to trade water. To trade water, you simply deduct as much as you want from your canteen. And your friend tops up these two and is hopefully grateful for the fact that you've just saved his life. If he's not grateful, well, you'll have to slap him silly when you finish the game because you still have to work together for the time being. The water carrier has finished his go and draws one, two, three cards from the Sandstorm's deck as before. So the first one, Storm moves one tile to the left. One. Hmm. Second card, Storm moves one tile up. Now, if the eye of the storm is already in such a place that it can't move any further, then you effectively get a nice break from the storm. Unfortunately though, it's north, not south, so this tile moves up. And that gets buried. The third and final card, two tiles to the left. Now, as stipulated before, one tile moves and gets a sand, but because no further tile can move into the eye of the storm from the left hand side, sorry, the right hand side, it means that you don't move it. No sand gets placed and effectively you take it as a breather. Always a good thing when that happens, but don't count on it saving yourself too often. We then cut back for the last turn of this example, the archeologist. Now the archeologist, is going to flip over the tile he's on. It's another tunnel. Unfortunately, it just happens to be right next door to the tunnel we already had. So it's not the most useful tunnel in the world, but he gets a yet another jetpack for his trouble. Not the best find in the world, but at least you have it there as a potential. And also, because these tiles flip around the place as a result of the eye of the storm, there is the potential for the tunnel being moved across. However, at least you can say that this area with two tunnels and a well is quite a nice little safe haven. Now, this collection of sand tiles is depleting faster and faster, so he's deciding he's going to start clearing sand. So he's going to take two off this tile, two off this tile, and then for his fourth action, he's going to move to here. With his turnover, he then flips another three of these. First up, the sandstorm moves three tiles to the left. Now, as stipulated before, no tiles can move into the left towards the eye of the storm. Therefore, we take it as a breather and we count ourselves lucky. Second card, it's moving downwards. 
Now this time it can move one space, one sand tile. And thirdly, we have it moving straight back up two spaces. So one and two. One oop, and two. Yes, the one. We then finally cut back to the water carrier. So far things are not going swimmingly, you know, they're okay for water, the tunnels aren't in the best place they could hope for, and they have yet to find many clues. So, and the sand is starting to pile up in that corner. So both of them are deciding they're going to go over there and try and sort things out. So the water carrier is going to make a start. One, two, three. Three action points to move there. While he's there, he might as well get on with excavating a tile. So his fourth action is to flip it over. Aha! He's found the ship. The ship that you actually crashed on here in the first place. So you take the ship, which is this wonderful, huge model with bits to put the relevant parts, like the steering wheel and the propeller and the what I like to call the flux capacitor, which is this kind of weird thing going from the Back to the Future reference. And you place it on that tile to say you found the ship. Now that's a good sign. Eventually you have to get all the parts by finding all these clue tiles and locating where they are and then get all the parts and get them back to that ship. It's no good if you find all the parts and then don't find the ship. It's useless, you have to find everything. And in all that time you have to make sure that this sand pile does not deplete and you also have to make sure that you don't run out of water in your canteen, otherwise you die from that. And of course, there's the sandstorm itself. This is going to pick up and get worse as time goes on. So three, four, five, six, and then death. Lots of ways to lose this game, only one way to win. Get all the parts, get to the ship, get everyone on it, and fly away. So that's essentially how Forbidden Desert plays out. You take four action points worth of actions on your turn, and then you draw cards from the Sandstorm deck, depending on how violent the storm is. You place sand tiles all over the locations that move, and you try and excavate as many tiles as you can, as quickly as you can, to find where all the parts go. Unfortunately for these two, they have yet to find a particular part, but they have at least managed to find a good water source, and they have managed to find the ship itself. So all is not lost yet. However, will they ever survive? Well, that's for me to know and for you to guess. So that's my how to play for Forbidden Desert. The review will be coming up very shortly after this video. I hope it was useful for you. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. This is Luke Hector from The Broken Meeple, signing off for now. Goodbye.